This is the new Dacia Sandero, which is still officially Britain's cheapest car. What we've got here is the stepway version, but the regular hatchback currently starts at £8,000. You have to pay more than twice that to buy an entry-level Ford Fiesta. Now, obviously, here at Car Buyer, we love cars, but we also appreciate the fact that there are some people that just aren't as passionate as we are. So if that's you and you're just after a simple run around gets you from A to B with minimal fuss that you don't have to spend any more money than you absolutely have to, then I will not take no for an answer that this should be at the top of your shortlist. Now, before I tell you why, should we go for the hat trick? Like it, subscribe it, bell button it, bosh. While we liked the previous Sandero, Dacia's no frills approach was very easy to identify before you'd even got inside. That's changed for the new model. While it still isn't the most stylish super mini on the market, it's much less frumpy than before. The design is sharper overall and new headlights, incorporating Y-shaped daytime running lights, play a big part in modernising the look of the car. The Stepway is essentially a crossover style range topping version of the Sandero that comes with some extras including roof rails, body cladding and a raised ride height. It starts at a still very reasonable £11,000. Dacia is owned by Renault and the Sandero has historically been based on older versions of the Clio. This time round it uses the same platform as the latest model, which is a sound base to start from. It also means there are plenty of shared parts in spite of the difference in price between the two. Now a couple of obvious things that you'll notice from the Clio, things like the gear stick or these dials here for the air con. I mean it's not as nice as an actual Clio in here but just like the outside of the car, the design of the inside is so much better than Dacia's of old. I mean in the past the dash was just like one continuous vast textureless plastic meh but now look we've got some different materials some different shapes doesn't feel as dowdy or as basic anymore i mean admittedly as soon as your eyes tend to wander a little bit lower than say the air vents then the plastic used is like hard wearing scratchy stuff you also get it on the doors now i know that i complained about that in other cars but when you consider the price of the dacia sandero you cannot assume or expect plush materials in here. This is a smart, simple, solid interior that actually is going to do the job for most Dacia buyers. Now the range topping versions of the Sanderos come with this 8 inch touchscreen with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but lower down the range you're going to have to make do with this smartphone holder and this very conveniently placed USB socket. Although, with most people using their smartphones rather than the infotainment system anyway, you might be fine with that if it's going to save you some dosh. Now as well as the touchscreen, you've also got a nice little list of luxuries here in the prestige spec. You've got all round parking sensors, rear view camera. Oh and for once I don't have to talk about digital dials because the Sandero has the good old analogue version which I think look adorable. It's got all the information that you need and Lord knows we need to cut back on our screen time. The regular Sandero is available in three trim levels called Access, Essential and Comfort. The entry level model is extremely basic in order for Dacia to offer the headline starting price and with no radio or air conditioning and black plastic bumpers it's worth moving up to the Essential trim. This only costs a thousand pound more and also allows you to upgrade from the sluggish 64 brake horsepower engine in the Access model. The stepway version also comes in three trim levels, but is better equipped to begin with, so there's no access model. Instead, you can choose from Essential, Comfort and Prestige. Now the Prestige model, which is the spec of our car, is the range topper, so is the only Sandero model to feature alloy wheels, an electronic handbrake and climate control. It still starts at just under £14,000. The only options for the Sandero are a full-size spare wheel and metallic paint. Now another way which this new Sandero is an improvement on the old one is here in the back because the car has actually grown a little bit. So me, I'm five foot six, plenty of leg room back here. There's also more shoulder room if you want to get three people back here. Plus the extra space means that getting a child seat on either of the outer seats where the isofix points are is much easier. 
And this stepway version, because it's higher off the ground as well, also helps with that. So that is worth considering if you have young children. But overall, I'd say here in the back feels sturdy rather than sumptuous. I mean, we've got more black plastic moulding here on the doors, but oh, prestige spec. We've been treated to chrome door handles. Yeah, Dacia knows how to treat a girl and how to treat her right. With the seats in place, both the regular Sandero and the Stepway version offer 328 litres of boot space, which is not far off the best in its class. Top spec Stepway models come as standard with modular roof bars, which can be used as a roof rack for up to 80 kilograms of gear if you've already filled up the boot. All models, apart from that basic access version of the regular Sandero, get a 60-40 split-folding rear seat. There are no fancy sliding rear benches or hatches, but folding the seats down does free up a very useful 1,108 litres of space. Now, another thing that's quite noticeably different between the Dacia Sandero and the more expensive Super Minis, like the Clio, for example, is this seems a bit more noisy inside. Now, whether that is just the tyres on the road, the wind over the car and the engine just bouncing off the plastic, I don't know, but I suspect it's just less sound insulation, which again is just another way to keep costs down. You've got three engine options. The one underneath this bonnet is the 89 brake horsepower TCE 90 one litre, which is actually the one that we would go for. Now the regular hatchback does have a 64 brake horsepower petrol version available, which blimey, I know it's cheap, but my God, that's slow, like really slow, like crying tears of frustration because you're trying to overtake anybody kind of slow. Does so 0 to 62 in 16.7 seconds. So yeah, we'd say best to upgrade to this one. I mean, this is by no means lightning fast, but it's punchy most of the time. There's also a more powerful 99 brake horsepower version that runs on petrol and LPG. And both of those will do 0 to 62 in 11.5 seconds much more acceptable. Dacia claims around 53 miles per gallon in official fuel economy for all three engines, which is very reasonable. CO2 emissions of around 120 grams per kilometre place all versions of the Sandero in a benefit in kind bracket that makes it fairly unappealing as a company car. And hybrid tech to lower the official emissions figure would make the car too expensive to produce, so this won't change. The TC100 by fuel model has an LPG tank under the boot floor and can run on either gas or petrol. LPG is considerably cheaper than petrol to buy, so this model could ultimately be the most affordable to run if you do plenty of miles and have somewhere local for the regular LPG top-ups. Not all fuel stations sell it. So, other than avoiding the entry-level engine if you can afford to, because seriously, a mobility scooter will beat you at traffic lights. What else is there to say about how the Dacia Sandero drives? Well, I'm assuming you're not expecting me to say that this is a deceptively thrilling hot hatch. I'm not about to surprise you. It's an unassuming, competent runaround. Well, the fact that it shares a platform with the current Clio means that it doesn't lean as much in corners as the old Sandero did. But the softer suspension that it's got, other than some rivals, means that it still does do that. Oh, but the softer suspension means that it's a very comfortable drive, especially in this stepway version. So we're slightly higher off the floor, so you don't feel the lumps and bumps in the road as much, unless they're absolutely terrible. The steering's pretty light, but feels accurate enough. Doesn't feel like it's gonna wander around the road too much. Also, not too bad, this six-speed gearbox. We wouldn't recommend getting the CVT Auto unless you absolutely have to have one. All in all, I would say this is a very reasonably nice drive. Although it doesn't take you too long to notice the Sandero's shortcomings in terms of handling, so when you're driving quicker on twisty, turny roads. I mean, if that's the kind of thing that you're after, then you're going to have to splash the cash, I'm afraid. Get yourself a Ford Fiesta or a high-end i20. While you check out how much money is in your piggy bank, allow me to run through the Sandero's deal makers and deal breakers. The Sandero is officially Britain's most affordable car, but it's actually incredibly good value in all trims, even the range-topping versions. 
There's more space inside than ever before, and the boot is one of the biggest in this class. The Sandero is comfortable rather than sporty, and that's especially true of this jacked-up stepway model. The starting price grabs all the headlines, but the entry-level Sandero is so slow and basic that very few people are likely to buy one. The car is certainly better to drive than before, but it still feels relatively sedate, even with the more powerful engines. I think it's safe to say it's very unlikely you're going to have a picture of the Dacia Sandero as your desktop background. It's not exciting, it doesn't really have bags of personality, it's not futuristic, it's not retro. It is, however, fantastic value for money, and for many people, that's the most important thing when they're buying a new car. Dacia constantly undercut the Sandero's rivals in terms of price, and they have still managed to do that, even considering this new version is so much better than the old one. And this stepway version, for example, that's a bit more expensive, is still £10,000 less than a Ford Fiesta Active and a Honda Jazz Crosstar, which remains the most compelling reason why this should seriously be considered if you're after a new small car. It is practical, it is economical, it is reasonable to drive, but most importantly, it is the most affordable way to buy yourself a very competent new car. If you found this video useful, then why not watch our Hyundai i20 review or our Small Cars and Super Minis playlist. Thanks for watching.